Mic check, 2-1. <laughs> What's up guys, this is DDP. I'm here today because I am fed the hell up with something that I have noticed has been rampant for a long time, but it, it's baffling to me right now. If you're looking above my head as I break the fourth wall, I'm talking about cowboy fans who double as haters. Now here's what I mean when I say that. I mean, hey, when this team was three and five and everything looked like it was falling off, it's okay to be critical about the team. It's okay to be constructively critical of the team when even in victory, there are things that they can improve on. But what's not okay is when your team has won eight of nine games, won the NFC East, and a playoff game. A playoff game. You've won three playoff games now since February 1996, and you're still trashing the team because you don't like who they have at quarterback? Are you serious? Like, are you? You're not a Cowboy fan. I'm actually convinced you are not a Cowboy fan if you're that case. Because here's the thing. The Cowboys are the most polarizing team in the NFL. We know this. This is no secret. But what doesn't what doesn't make it any better is the fact that like Eagle fans, Giants fans, Redskins fans, Steeler fans, 49er fans, we get all of that hate. We've earned that historically. But when you, someone who calls himself a Cowboy fan, when you're tearing down the team from within, you're here every day. You're worse than any of these guys because at least they have other places to be and other teams to talk about. Even though they like to keep the Cowboys names in their mouth, they still have other games that they focus on. But you're here every day and you're talking all kinds of noise and just chopping down a team when there's no reason to. Case in point, I had an exchange on Facebook earlier today with someone on the Dallas Prospect page. It was a string of highlights from the playoff win, the 24-22 victory over the Seattle Seahawks in the wild card round of the playoffs. The caption labeled Dak's performance saying, he wasn't perfect, but when the game was on the line, he delivered as he's done throughout his career. Now here's the thing, Dak Prescott, since he came into the league in 2016, has 15 game-winning drives. 15, most in the NFL. You can have all the issues you want with Dak. You can be upset with how he handles his pocket presence. You can be up upset with his downfield inaccuracy at times. And yes, even in this game, he missed some throws. And the, the intercepted pass, even though it should have been called a pass interference, it wasn't a great throw. It was on the back shoulder as the receiver was moving away from it. He has mistakes, but when it comes down to put up or shut up, more often than not, more than anyone else in the league since 2016, Dak Prescott has put up. But yeah, those passes I hear you saying, he missed Noah Brown. He missed what could have been a touchdown if he just makes that an accurate pass. Oh, lordy, lordy, he missed a pass. Oh, he's trash, he's garbage. Never mind the fact that Deshaun Watson missed how many passes in his playoff game? Never mind Lamar Jackson. How many passes did he miss? Like, appreciate what you have. I understand that there is room for growth, but understand there's a difference between the player and the coaching staff and the system they run. You can get so much more out of Dak, and even now, even with what we're getting, even though it's not always as much as I would even like, I can at least accept and understand when he is doing something. Tony Romo won two playoff games in his entire career. Dak already has one. Okay, Romo, <laughs> Romo sat for three years. He won his first one in 2009. So we're talking about his third full season as the starter. Okay, he sat for three years. You're talking about a guy that's six, seven years in the league at that point, and you're gonna compare him to Dak. And people twist it anyway. I love Tony Romo, I'll, I'll say that. I was a staunch Romo, I don't even like saying apologist because I don't think it's 
an accurate representation. It automatically puts you on the defensive when really you don't need to be. I was in Romo's corner, even through all the criticism, and I noticed a lot of the same people who hate on Dak were the people that hated on Romo, but now they uphold Romo like he was some pinnacle of quarterback play. Look at it, look at it this way. Tony Romo, as I said, two playoff wins. Didn't get his first one until he would have been in the league already six years. Cool. Awesome. But everyone holds Tony up like he's 2014 Tony, and that's what he was his whole career. That's not accurate. It's just not. Tony Romo, he was a gunslinger, man. He could put up 30, 40 touchdowns in the season sometimes, but he was damn sure going to throw 19, 20 interceptions along the way as well. It wasn't until about 2013, maybe 2012 at the earliest, that he really started to dial that back and you started to see 31 touchdown, 10 interception seasons. But that's not indicative of his whole career. Oh, but Tony never had talent, I hear you say. His 2007 season, his first full season as a starter, he had 13 pro bowlers. 13, three all pro offensive linemen. Maybe not all pro, three pro bowl offensive linemen. I'll walk that back a little bit on the ramp. But, oh, I hear you say, but those guys were past their prime. Yeah, but it wasn't the last pro bowl two of the three of them made. He had a top five defense. He had talent everywhere. Marion Barber, Terrell Owens, Jason Witten in his prime. Tony was in his own prime. He had the talent. And I'm not trying to dig up old wounds I'm simply saying, it's inaccurate to say he never had anything. Oh, but those three eight and eight years. Okay, I get it. If you take Tony off of those three eight and eight years, they might be three, four, and 12 years. I get it. This team was trashed those years, especially defensively. But when it came down to it, Tony had three straight, and in his career, four overall, win and you're in playoff games. Week 17, win and you're in. And in two of those three games, he threw ball busting interceptions to cost us the game. At Washington, horrible read. Just lofts it like this just gentle little floater for DeMarco Murray that the Redskins pick off. Like, again, I love Tony, but I'm going to be honest with this, and everyone who cuts down Dak in the name of Tony Romo, you're just wrong. You're just wrong. Dak can get better. Is he ever going to be the pocket passer Tony was? I don't think so, but that's not what you have to have to win. Case in point, this game. Oh, Russell Wilson is, he's elite. Oh God, did you see those like four or five passes that were just mwah, beautiful along the sideline? No doubt. Russell Wilson, Doug Baldwin, that was nasty what they were doing in that game. But here's a fun fact for you, and this was in my debate earlier today on Facebook. What do you recall about that game? Hmm. Well, Dak Prescott went something like 22 for 33 for 226 yards, one touchdown, one pick, and a rushing touchdown. Okay, that's uh, like an 86 quarterback rating, something like that. Not bad, not bad. Okay, what about Russell Wilson? Oh, well, he threw for 233 yards. Oh, only seven more yards? Well, yeah, but he had one touchdown and one rushing touchdown. Ooh, okay, so he matched Dak in the touchdown output, even, even to the T as far as how he did it. Okay, cool. Oh, wait a minute. Then I remember 75 of those passing yards came on the final drive where we were in prevent defense and gave up 56 yards in one rip. And his touchdown pass was on that final drive as well. Hmm. What does that tell you? They played effectively even. Yes, Dak had a turnover and Russell didn't. But we should have had pass interference on that call anyway, even though it wasn't a great pass. I'm saying it right now. It wasn't a great pass. You should have had pass interference on the play. They got away with one. They didn't get away with it later on in the game-winning drive for Dallas. KJ Wright, I'm talking about you. And that was the difference in the game. But Dak, on third and 14, he put the game, the team, the season on his shoulders, and he ran through the Seahawks for 14, no, excuse me, 16 yards. It was third and 14. He rips off 16 yards, gets down to like the half-yard line, and effectively wins the game. His own teammates after the game are gushing over him. Jalen Smith, Ezekiel Elliott, Zeke called him grown man on that play, called his play legendary, said that he won the game. He being Dak, not he as in Zeke saying, I won the game. Zeke had a great game too. And oh, I thought, uh, here's, the, here's the haters response to that. 
Oh, I thought quarterbacks won the game. The defense played great and held Russell Wilson in check, like you said earlier, though. That's the thing. It's a team sport. The defense played great. If you look at Dallas's last three meetings with Seattle in the last 13 months, by the way, shout out to Bob Stern for this stat, they have held them to 2.8 rushing yards, an attempt. That is minuscule. The Seahawks were a team who came in leading the league in rushing yards per game. They had the fifth leading rusher in Carson, and he was held to 20 yards on 13 carries. Dallas took it to them. That was the difference in the game. But at the same time, someone's got to put points on the board. And Zeke had a great game, 169 all-purpose yards, 30 touches. He, he was a beast. He was. And at the same time, it still came down to 3rd and 14 and Dak Prescott. Dakota Prescott. Rain Dakota Prescott. Running through KJ Wright. Running through Bobby Wagner. And delivering. And then quarterback sneak the next play for effectively the dagger in the game. I know Seattle again got that quick touchdown, but they had no kicker left, so they were never going to convert the onside kick. So there you go. That's the game. That's the difference. It's okay to say Dak played well. You're not cu you're not cutting down the defense or Zeke when you say that. You don't just like you can't give everything that Dak does. You can't give all of the credit to Zeke in the defense or the offensive line. Which, by the way, you remember when that was the example? Yeah, Dak was only sacked once in the game. But if you look at the last two seasons in general, the offensive line hasn't been good. Dak has been sacked this year 56 times. Oh, I hear you saying, though, but how many times does he hold the ball too long? His bad pocket presence. How many times does he eat a sack instead of throwing it away? Well, there's a stat for that. It was 14 times. Again, high, but not even in the top five among quarterbacks in the league in such situations. And if you take out those 14 sacks, fine. The offensive line still gave up 40-plus sacks. It's okay to say that Dak played well. You're not minimizing the other guys. But the same has to be true the other direction. You can't say, oh, well, Dallas only won because of the offensive line. Ha! Nope. For a long stretch of this season, no. They played much better, much better yesterday. Excuse me, Saturday, as I record this on a Monday. They played much better Saturday, but it's still... It's not indicative and it's not honest commentary. If you try and give all the credit for Saturday just to Zeke and just to the defense at the expense of Dak, then you're a hack. I'm saying that now. You're a hack. You're not an honest person. You're not a serious person. You are misrepresenting things. You have confirmation bias because all you want to hear is the negative about Dak. You don't want to acknowledge the positive. It's a two-way street. I have ripped Dak at times this year when I felt he deserved it. When they were three and five and Dak looked trash, I cut into Dak. When he throws the pick in Mari Cooper's first game, throws the pick in the end zone trying to force it to Amari, I called that out. When he had the two interceptions at Seattle, even though the second one especially was just a crazy series of bounces that Earl Thomas brought in, I still called him out. But you can't ignore the fact that he produced 28 touchdowns this season against 13 total turnovers. Better than 2 to 1 ratio. I understand you saying, hey, he had 415 pass attempts on the season and only 22 went for touchdowns. Okay, well, we also had drop touchdowns, and we also had the fact that, oh, yeah, he ran for six more. So automatically, the number of attempts for touchdown passes are going to be cut into by the six rushing touchdowns he got. By the way, only quarterback in NFL history to ever run for five plus touchdowns while throwing for 20 plus touchdowns in three straight seasons. You know who did it in two for the first time? Dak Prescott! Give the man credit for when he does something good. When he is on, when he is making it happen, you have to give him credit or else you're not a Cowboy fan. You might not think he's the guy, but damn it if you can't cheer for the guy as he wins your team his third playoff win since 1996 you're not a cowboy fan you can say hey let's see how far this goes i'm still not convinced he's the franchise guy i still think maybe they should look elsewhere if not at least competition from a veteran next year fine i can accept all of that what i can't accept 
is you rooting against Dak and effectively rooting against this team while considering yourself a Cowboy fan. You're here every day. Those other haters, they're gone at least half the time. You are the biggest hater. And you parade yourself, you wrap yourself in the silver and blue, you parade yourself as a Cowboy fan. You're not. You're just not. And if you, if you still think I'm insane, if you're gonna backlash at me for this video, look at your own comments. Look at everything you say. How much negativity you spew across everything. You were the ones saying Cowboys were going to be one and done because Dak can't get it done. He wins you a game and you're still cutting him down. Nah, fam, you're not a Cowboy fan. You're just a hater. Call it what it is. Call a spade a spade. If you spend your time being negative about the team and cutting them down just because you don't like the quarterback, then you're a hater. End of story.